So everyone has been saying, check out Topre. Topre is the best. It's the best tactile you'll ever, ever use. So guess what we did? We bought ourselves a Real Force R2 with authentic Topre switches. And then we also got ourselves an Ebo Maker Niz Plum, which has electro capacitive switches, which are essentially Topre clones. Ebo Maker did send us out this board at our request been a board that we've been looking at for quite a long time and we're really interested in. So in this video, we're going to compare authentic Topre versus Topre clones, but we're also going to compare the two boards as well and what you get in each one as well as which one's my favorite and why. So let's jump into that right now. Hey guys, this is Betty from Switch and Click, and I don't know how long I've known about Topre, but I think it was very early into my deep dive into mechanical keyboards that I started hearing that term specifically. And when I looked it up, I was always like, whoa, these are really, really expensive. So they've always been pushed out as far away as I could possibly push them out. But I think it's about time that we try them and get a sense as to what they feel like compared to some of these other tactile switches such as the Glorious Pandas, which I did a full review right here, and then the Drop Holy Pandas, which I'm going to do a comparison real soon. But if you're interested in the sound test of those, I got that right here as well, lubed the exact same way. But Topre, onto Topre, of course. They are very expensive, and the reason because they are patented, and they're not exactly mechanical. They're rubber dome switches, and they actuate via an electrocapacitive effect, which means that you're not really having any contact in specific parts to make that actuate. So there is a rubber dome in there and that provides pretty much the resistance that you feel when you type on them. But alongside that, there is a spring as well. So that gives you that kind of regulated spring force that you're so used to. But it feels very different compared to a regular mechanical switch. And time for the comparison pretty much. So we're going to go through the same things that we went through before. So things like what's in the box, the price, the things like that, so that you all get a sense of exactly what these boards have in them. It's not just a switch review because I find that fairly boring, especially switch comparisons, because it's really all preference. But in this case, the price tag is pretty high and I feel like preference sort of matters here. All right, so what's in the box of each one? The Real Force R2 right here is about $250. So that's a really expensive price tag for something that looks sort of ancient. But in the box, all you get is pretty much this board by itself, and it does come with a non-detachable rubber cable, and it looks, well, it looks old. It's what you find in your father's office cubicle, probably, except it's much nicer than that. And alongside that, it comes with a warranty card, pretty much all in Japanese, I believe, because Topre is a Japanese company, or at least Real Force is a Japanese company. But anyways, I have no idea what this even says. All I know is it's probably a warranty card. So I'm gonna to toss that aside. And that's pretty much it for the Real Force R2, a whopping $250 of keyboard and warranty card. And then we have the Epo Maker Niz Plum here. I know they're different layouts, but I'm gonna compare them objectively without considering the layout because you guys all know 65% is my new favorite layout. All right, so this keyboard runs at about $150, I believe. We did get this sent to us from Epo Maker, but in all honesty, we would have went and bought it and sought it out but this is quite convenient for us because, you know, we're still in the red and we're trying to climb out. So 
What's in that box? Obviously you get the keyboard itself and check it out. Where's that wire? It's, well, it's on the side. So it has a braided white USB-C cable. Looks pretty cool. I don't really need to open it. Alongside that, it comes with a pretty much a very custom looking wire keycap puller. It is very nice and I've never seen anything like it. It's made entirely of metal and you even get Mac compatible keycaps if you're interested in switching some of those Windows control and alt keys for option and command, whoa. And you get springs and I believe these are 10 gram springs, but they give you enough springs to cover the entire board. The spring force on these is 35 grams, so fairly light, but if you need something heavier, I mean, these springs, you can just put them on there. And it comes with a plastic cover with the packaging, of course, but additionally, you can always use that as a dust cover if you want. And there's a little brochure, except again, it's in another language, so we're just gonna toss that aside because well, I don't understand it. So a lot of accessories in this little one and it's 150 bucks, so quite a deal. It looks pretty cool. It doesn't look as ancient, so to say. All right, so the build quality of each board, they're both pretty much all plastic and I haven't really taken apart any of them, but they both really don't have any flex or give at all when you're trying to bend them. The cable on the Niz Plum is obviously better and will last you a longer time. I'm surprised, I'm surprised this does have a non-detachable cable, to be honest. But on the back, it does have different wire routing channels, so you can go up to the left or to the right if you need that wire to go somewhere else. And on the back of the Niz Plum, it looks quite similar. It's pretty much the same wire routing channels, except the cable is detachable. On the Niz, we do have two angles for the kickstands, and they're also clear, which is something that I've never seen before in a keyboard either. On the Real Force, we got two pretty basic, normal kickstands, one angle each and there are four rubber pads on each keyboard as well, so no slippage there. So build quality is very similar. They're pretty much all plastic, except for the plate, which I'm going to assume would be some kind of metal of some sort, or else there would be a lot more flex in these boards. In terms of overall design and aesthetic, personally, I would go for the Niz Plum, but the overall colorways, I mean, the Real Force R2 has got a pretty basic, sort of an IBM kind of look with the rustic looking gray and then the off-white as well. And the Niz has got a light gray with a more bright kind of white. So design, the Niz Plum here is definitely the winner. All right, so the keycaps, which is a pretty important part of this keyboard actually. If you're interested in jumping into switches though, check out the timestamps in the description box or the timeline bar and you can just scroll straight forward. If I'm talking too slow, feel free to speed this video up, which you know you could, or you can slow it down if you wanna hear my voice be a little bit more soothing. Anyway, smash that like button if you're getting any value out of this video at all. But keycaps, they are both PBT keycaps, the Real Force R2 has die sub legends, and the Niz has laser, laser etched legends, which aren't as durable and definitely will probably fade over time much faster than the R2 will. And the overall profile, the Niz Plum has a cherry profile keycap set, which is actually really cool because I rarely see those stock in a keyboard. It makes it super comfortable to type on and very low as well, so the height doesn't bother you. The R2 has its own real force profile. It's something in between an OEM profile and a cherry profile. So it's a little bit higher, but the front is less high. So that makes it sort of comfortable. Overall, I think OEM is sort of too high for me. So in terms of typing speed and comfort, the Niz Plum takes it on this one. In fact, in my first typing test with this board, I got a whopping 145 words per minute, which is the fastest that I think I've ever typed a typing test ever. And it was pretty accurate, 100% accurate accuracy in fact. And the Real Force, I wasn't as fast. It does have a 
much higher spring force at 55 grams but uh, from what I've seen spring force doesn't really affect how fast I type it does bounce back super fast though so that's really nice and prevents me from making typos too another thing about the keycaps which is really important is that the R2 has toe brace switches and toe brace switches have a non-standard keycap stem kind of thing so you have to buy specific looking keycaps for them and they're sort of circular shaped in the Niz Plum, the switches are a toe brake clone at some kind of electrocapacitive switch. And if you take off the keycap, you can see that the switch has a clear housing and there's a clear like rubber dome in there. But you also notice that it has a cross-shaped stem. And what that means is that you can replace the keycap set on the Niz Plum without needing toe brake specific keycaps, which is really convenient because, I mean, you already probably own like five sets of keycaps by now that have that cross-shaped stem. I know I do, so I just could plop them on. But the original keycaps have a really nice aesthetic and a really nice font, really nice legends. I dig them a lot. They're very similar to each other. The font is pretty much the same. The thickness and color is slightly different and you can see differences in like backspace here and caps lock where it puts it into two rows rather than one row wide. But I sort of like the aesthetic. I don't really mind either way. The arrow keys on the Niz are a little bit better because they're less old computer looking. And you also got these windows buttons here. So, I mean, overall the aesthetic of the keycaps actually depends on you. I know that I'm not a huge fan of the old style looking boards, but that really appeals to some people. So up to you. Okay, so on to the really, really important, crucial, crucial, crucial part, and that is the switches. All right, so I've taken apart the L on each board. Hope you can see that. And clearly they're already quite different, but very similar at the same time. So I did say this before, but the R2 has 55 gram toe brace switches. The Niz Plum is a 35 gram electrocapacitive switch here. And you can really see that they're very similar. So you can hear the Niz feels and sounds quite like a silent red or a silent brown. And the bottom out of both feel quite mushy. Some people say it's very cloudy, like typing on clouds almost. But another really important thing that you may have heard is that the upstroke on the Niz is a lot more silent than on the toe brake. So we'll look at that again real quick. And then the upstroke on the R2 actually makes quite a clack. So very significant differences there. Obviously a higher spring force means the rate at which it springs back up is going to be much faster. You guys all know that I prefer really heavy switches. I typically use 67 grams of whatever, who knows what. But uh, between these two boards, I actually prefer the lighter one. And I was really surprised at this at first, like why am I so accurate with the board? Why can I type so fast with the board? So it got me thinking that that rubber dome, the additional resistance that the rubber dome and that additional spring provides actually prevents me from making typos because it's quite a clear tactile bump. It's the same way on the R2, except it's a little bit heavier and with heavy switches, it makes sense that you're typing more accurately. You're typing a little bit more careful. The tactile bump is harder than a Cherry MX Brown, but compared to all these high tactility switches that I've been using, it's nowhere compared to that. It's very soft. It's sort of a round-ish kind of thing. I mean, you, you've all typed on, on membranes, on rubber domes before. It's sort of that feeling with a consistent press and a sort of a better spring back. The R2 does feel a little bit harsher in that bump, but on the Niz, they do give you all those additional springs. So if the 35 grams is too light, you can toss the springs on, and I think it becomes 45 grams again, I don't know if those are 10 grams or not, but I think they are. So in terms of satisfactory feel and sound, the Niz is definitely winning here. 
another win for the Topre clone. But before we move on, I'd just like to jump to that sound test so that you guys get to hear what I'm talking about. All right, so on to the stabilizers. What surprises me is that the R2 actually only has one pair of stabilizers, and that's in the space bar. The shift, the backspace, the enter, the other shift, none of them have stabilizers. In fact, they look just like the Topre switch, except the housing of the switch is extended and take up the space of those keys. So pretty surprising there, considering that they don't sound that bad at all. But the Niz, the Niz is actually a funny story. We thought they were just, you know, normal cherry style stabilizers. So we opened them up and guess what we saw? We saw CoStar stabilizers. Uh, but not only that, they were like just globs of lube on the wires. And it was like, oh, I don't, I don't want to touch that. And I don't want to put, you know, the thing about CoStar stabilizers is that they're sort of a pain to put on and that's what it was it was a pain to put back on but not only that it was very luby so even more of a pain and i don't like those textures on my fingers so you know i let jake do it but after that we were like mm, let's not take off any more of these larger keys because i'm not really interested in looking at the stabilizers that much but they are co-star they are lubed very 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 lubed so if you do want to take them off you know just keep that in mind and be careful of all that lube but the Niz Plump sounds really good. And that was the Niz. Here is the R2. So on the bigger keys of the R2, you can hear that clack sound much much louder and it does sound as if there's some kind of rattle but I think it's just the inconsistency of me pressing on one side of the key rather than evenly. All right so secondary layers and functions there is a really cool thing about the R2 and that's 
it has a num lock key. So the num lock key on the far top left, if you press that and you turn that on, and then you look at the secondary layers that are side printed, you can see that it has a number pad just sort of built in around that K cluster right there. And I would say that's pretty convenient if you're doing number entry, press that num lock, type in your numbers, turn it off, keep typing. But it's also staggered and slanted, so it takes a lot of muscle memory to really try and embed that into your brain rather than a ortholinear number pad. And then on the NISPLUM, you have, you know, your typical function row because it's a 65%, so it needs that. But on the left side here around that S cluster here, you see that there are mouse functions and you can move your entire mouse no matter what direction and right click and left click. So that's actually really cool. All right, so both functions, the numpad and the mouse movements, those are both really cool and depending what you want in a board, you can pick. All right, so the real decision, which one would I recommend that you buy? I'm Right now, I would say I'm sort of a little disappointed in Topre. And I know you guys are probably gonna say, get an HHKB, get a Leopold, get, you know, the better stuff. But in the end, it's still a Topre switch. Or you'll say, get the silent switch. But I'm just not that impressed for something that costs this much. I mean, it's $250. Corsair just released the K100 at 230, and I thought that was insane. But that had a lot more functionality and a lot more fancy features and RGB and lights. And it costs $20 less than this. So really I'm not too impressed on Topre right now. But the $150 Niz, I would say, I think it's worth my money, honestly. I think it is. And I haven't been using it that much because Jake has been hogging it for like the past week. I think it's his daily driver now. But I am impressed at how accurate and how fast I can type on it. And it has way more accessories. It's Mac compatible. It's got extra springs. It's got a detachable cable. You can get a Bluetooth version. It's pretty nice. And coming into this, I really thought that I would love Topre because all the comments, all the recommendations, all the, it's like typing on clouds. It's like the best thing ever. You've got to try it. Once you go Topre, you can't come back. And it's not like that. Um, yeah, it's, it's just not like that. This, um, it's not like that at all. So if you want to try an electro capacitive board, I highly, highly recommend the Apple Maker Niz Plum here. It's much cheaper than an actual Topre board and it sounds and feels a lot better. I know it's not what you expected and it's not what I expected either. I mean, this was a very interesting experience the past week and a half that it has been. Also, the lighting changed this week. Hope I'm not as dramatic now. The lights are much softer. Things are back to normal now. If you're interested in more videos like this one, and I'll be doing some tutorials really soon, so make sure you vote on the community tab as to what kind of tutorials you want or comment down below or go to our Discord and that's linked below as well and type it in the suggestions box and we'll be sure to keep that in mind. Follow us on Instagram, also linked down below for more behind the scenes, sneak previews as, as to what we get in the mail if we're allowed to talk about it and show it and you know all that good stuff and fancy pictures of keyboards all that jazz anyways this has gone on long enough in the future yes we will be someday getting an hhkb a leopold fc 660c slash m i don't know we got some keyboards coming in on the way a lot of things in store for this year so make sure you press subscribe and press that bell button anyways that's it for today i'll see you in the next one I'm so far away from the camera now, this doesn't even work. Ooh. Bye.